Crimping a battery connector to a cable is fast, secure, and reliable, providing you keep in mind a few best practices to get the best connection possible. Let's take a look. Number one, match the gauge of the connector to the gauge of the cable. Most of the time, matching the cable and the connector is very easy because cables and connectors are color-coded, stamped, or imprinted with gauge size. Number two, cut the cable cleanly using a sharp cutter so the end is flush. For smaller cable up to 2 watt gauge, a cutter like this Quick Cutter 1 will work fine. But for gauges larger than 2 watt and up to 500 MCM, use our Quick Cutter Heavy Duty Cutters. Number three, strip the cable to the correct length so that it fits properly in the connector barrel. If you strip it too short, the crimp won't hold. Strip it too long, and you get too much exposed cable, which is going to attract corrosion. Depending on the gauge and the style of terminal, you'll strip the cable at different lengths. A good rule of thumb is about one inch, but you should always check the cable to the connector barrel. Some technicians use a small cable cutter or a jackknife to strip the cable. The problem is that these tools will likely take off some of the wire, which in turn decreases the diameter of the cable, which can weaken the crimp. We recommend using a quality cable stripper so you can set the blade to the exact depth of the cable insulation. Number four, make sure you get all the strands in the barrel to ensure the strongest crimp. Again, by leaving out some strands, you actually decrease the cable diameter. Most cable connections benefit from heat shrink tubing. Heat shrink protects connections from corrosion. Color-coded heat shrink can help identify polarity and it acts as strain relief on connections, helping them last longer. To use heat shrink, be sure to slide it on prior to placing the terminal on the cable. Heat shrink is available with additional melting sealant for positive weatherproofing connections. Now it's time to crimp. Remember, regardless what type of brand of crimper you are using, they will all have die settings. Set the crimping dies to match the cable and connector gauge and style. A 4 gauge max lug like this will need to be set differently than a 4 gauge quick connector like this. Place a connector in the dies at the end of the barrel for the first crimp. Most connectors can be double crimped and are marked for crimping location. Be sure to make a full crimp. The crimping tool should fully close or cycle. An incomplete crimp will likely not hold the cable in place. Number seven, apply the heat shrink. Use a heat gun or flameless torch and apply heat evenly using a quick heat gun with heat reflector. Finally, test the crimp. Make sure the connector is secure and won't pull off. Following these simple practices will ensure good crimping every time. For more information on quick tools, connectors, and cables, visit quickcable.com.